Welcome back to the channel. I want to start off by thanking all the new subscribers. I really appreciate it. It really means a lot. Um, if you're interested in the type of content that this channel puts out, which is very rare, uh, there's not too many people out there putting out this type of content, um, I suggest subscribing. Uh, we kind of go in depth in uh, schematics, drawings, um, blue collar uh, trends, and basic troubleshooting and projects that I come across from a day to day basis as an electrician. So if you're interested in this type of content and what is involved in being an industrial electrician or just an industrial tech, I suggest that you subscribe and join today. I appreciate it. So today's video, um, we got called on uh, short notice about a machine that is not operating or a machine that is down. Apparently this machine had been down for a couple days and uh, they called me in on the last minute to help uh, see if I can get this thing going. So uh, we started our process and uh, we really uh, jumped into it. We took a deep dive and we really started digging down into um, nuts and bolts in this piece of equipment. Um, I'm somewhat familiar with it and uh, we were successful. So this client was very happy and um, I believe they'll be calling me back. So I'm, I'm, I can't be mad at that. So go ahead and have a look. So this big piece of equipment, uh, as soon as I got in, it's about five o'clock in the morning. This equipment was down, everything was shut off. So I'm doing the first startup and I'm, I had five different uh, suggestions of what could be wrong. Uh, some people were saying uh, the drive is bad. Some people were saying uh, the bearings are bad. Um, I, I had multiple uh, versions of the same story. But basically, the equipment is down. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna jump into it, and I'm gonna give them my version of what you know I believe is wrong with this machine. And it's not gonna be a version; it's gonna be a solution. So I'm um, rotating uh, some of the arms, and I'm just kind of walking everything out of the way. So on this piece of equipment, which is very large, very large piece of equipment, this this equipment actually has about 20 motors operating on it. So there's a whole bank of VFD drives on this. I mean, there is contactors galore, breakers, relays, and um, the rack, it has a, a double rack PLC. Uh, there's a lot going on in this piece of equipment. So uh, it, it really took a lot to kind of okay. deep dive into this and uh, figure out what was going on. Into the other. <clears throat> so I really couldn't go based off of um, what everybody had said prior. Um, I had to just kind of see for myself, but I, I kept everything in mind. So uh, there's actually three arms operating on this molding machine. And it's this last now arm that is the uh, issue. So it has a rotate and then it has a plate motor that kind of um, twists uh, the molds in another direction. And that plate motor was okay. not operating. Okay, we are right there. Ooh, that's not good. That is not good. So I'm trying to operate the motor and it's not doing anything. So I had to deliver, I had to um, decide if it was a mechanical failure or if it was an electrical okay. failure. Okay, so that pin was just for the lever to pull the brake out, right? So I'm yeah. kind of thinking that there may be a bad bearing somewhere in uh, uh, multiple bearings okay. in this piece You're of equipment. You're just gonna rotate this plate. Right now, when you rotate the plate, see how it's not moving? Uh -huh. So I need to just kind of do that in little short bursts to see um if that what that motor is doing back there so don't just wait till i call you up all right go ahead go ahead do it again oh it's trying to function okay okay go the other way okay let me check something out i gotta check out the wiring for this brake one of those cables might have came out so this motor uh, oh, seems okay, like it wants more. to yep. function, have to bring me a but something's holding it up, meter. and I noticed right away that it has a brake. So I went to do a tug test on kind of all please? the wiring, and I did find okay. that one of the wires was loose, 
So I went and plugged that back in, and I was thinking, all right, cool, wires loose, no big deal. Let's let's get moving, you know. Uh, problem solved. But not even close. Not even close. Okay, go ahead and. Uh, jog it. Yeah, go ahead, jog it. Same thing. So okay, it's go the other way. Okay. So you can see right there, the motor's okay, trying let to me function. Check if that is getting voltage to it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is go ahead, jog it one more time. Okay. Okay. Does that contactor um, light up? This is a relay, yeah. It lights up. Go give me my like needle nose pliers, please. Yeah, so I had them operate okay. it so I could identify which relay Let me go grab is more or less in the ballpark just by eyeballing it and without any drawings. Luckily for me, um, there was a, a set of drawings for this thing, uh, digital format. Mm -hmm. So I was able to print okay. some out and uh, start start kind of print out what I thought was the circuit that I was dealing with. Wait, rotate it one more time? And uh, go from there. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna have to pull up the drawing of that whole circuit and then make sure that I'm uh, following everything I need to follow. So here I am um, okay. using a highlighter to highlight okay. all the points of contact that I want to start troubleshooting on first. Um, so uh, this thing is massive. This thing goes from a uh, PLC card through racks of relays, through uh, and then, uh, um, breakers and out of a drive. So it's got several points of uh, what could be a failure. And I had to kind of troubleshoot through all of them. So. Uh, it, <laughs> it was a long process. Altogether, it took me about four hours to troubleshoot this machine. Of course, I consolidated this video down okay. into uh, whatever, whatever whatever it is, uh, 15 minutes. Um, but yeah, this was a long process. But as a good practice, I always print out the drawings and I highlight all the segments that I want to troubleshoot. So here's the first part of the process of troubleshooting. I'm kind of checking my 24 volt from the PLC. And then I move into my 120 control voltage. Hey, uh, try to turn plate, the plate right here. Which is what operates yeah. the brake. Okay, okay, that's good. Okay. So it's Three. getting 120 out, oh, 43, oh, 44. but when I got to the brake and I would troubleshoot the brake itself with my meter, I noticed that the brake wasn't getting any voltage. So I'm kind of going through the wiring that it says that kind of leads directly to the brake. And I kind of swapped out some of these relays to see if I got a change. Uh, and if I, if I can start uh, sending a signal out to the brake to engage the coil on the brake. But that wasn't having any effect. So this thing should have been turning by then, and it still wasn't. So I was kind of getting lost at this point, and I was thinking that it could be in the drive. Because I noticed the other drives were operating at about five hertz, and that drive, for whatever reason, was only operating at one hertz. Or trying to operate at one hertz. So I ended up pulling the brake off, and I noticed that it was smoked. So if you look at this brake, it is smoked. After uh, another part of the process of kind of verifying that the drive was gonna be somewhat okay, uh, you know, determining that, hey, it's still functional because it wants to turn the motor, I pulled off the brake and uh, it's smoked. Oh, they were cooking. Those were cooking in there. Ooh, yeah. So what ended up happening was, uh, okay. The brake got smoked because one of those relays had uh, had failed. So the machine was operating and the brake was just cooking in there. So the brake had failed, which took out the relay, or the relay failed, which took out the brake. So there was uh, um, several things going on here and it, and it kind of took me a while to troubleshoot through that. All right, there you and are. And kind of identify right, kind of where I was with that. Right. 
So All right, luckily they had another break in their inventory, but I needed a concrete on, answer to give them. And I couldn't just say, hey, let's start changing parts and uh, let's see if it's this, let's see if it's that. I really wanted something concrete to tell them. And I was able to grab a brand new relay, put it in, and then I um, finally got voltage out there at the brake on the motor in the, uh, con in the little panel on the motor. And I would notice that I was feeding the brake, it's 120 volts that it needs to operate and it still wasn't operating. That's when I made the determination to pull the brake off and that's when I seen that the brake was smoked. But from the outside looking in, the brake looked fine. It didn't have any damage or any uh, wear marks or anything. Okay. It looked brand new, but wiring. internally it was oh. smoked. Okay, so it looks like... So here I have the drawing that's just specifically the for the brake. Shows white on terminal one. And the rectifier. The rectifier is the Red piece that three and blue operates the brake. Five. Okay, so that would be... So here I am getting in the new brake, and uh, and then I'll, as soon as I get the new brake in, I'm gonna go ahead and give it one final test and make sure that I'm on the right track. Uh, because at this point, I still wasn't sure that I had this uh, problem solved. So I'm gonna take my lock off. Of course, I lock it out every time I uh, get into that motor uh, chain area. And then I gotta do the whole startup Reset. procedure again. Control on, so right up the PLC. Okay, about five seconds. All right, network is good. Power supplies. Okay, let's get some power. The power, there we go. There we go. Yeah, we that's a lot power. of motors on this thing. It's got a lot of drives. All of our breakers are set. We're looking good. So here's the moment of truth. And there it's operational. All right, there we go. Beautiful. So at this point, I was pretty We're relieved. I was, I was pretty Four relieved because I went hertz. into this uh, okay. fix in the dark. And I had, Four you know, hertz. multiple uh, that's suggestions that's on what it could be. But... Of course, I'm gonna do my due okay. diligence and I'm gonna follow so my what? path, my process on troubleshooting oh. to kind of... Um, Behind one bad relay. One bad relay caused this whole problem. Here. Not here. One bad relay. Luckily, Holy they had these shit. parts in their inventory right. uh, from their maintenance department well, let's go and I was up. able to kind of just pull from that but I was under the gun because they had originally told me, Good. hey, um, you know, can you, you, you kind of have right. it done Sweet. in an hour, an hour and a half because they were going to have a, a customer walk through. So um, I was limited on time and it ended up taking four hours. So as I was working on it, their customers were walking through and we basically, we didn't have a choice. This machine was down. So um, yeah, just another fun day, uh, another successful um uh, troubleshoot that I uh, pulled off and it really feels good when you um, can really um, uh, close a deal and uh, find a, a smoking gun solution for their problems and uh, use my process and trust my experience to carry me through yet another uh, another uh, uh, failed piece of equipment so I appreciate everybody for watching and uh, if this is the kind of content that you guys like to watch I suggest sticking around because these kind of problems happen to me all the time and I always have to find my way out of it or wiggle my way out of it somehow, some way. I go into these problems not knowing you know, where this thing's gonna end up and 98% um, of the time I come out successful. So I appreciate the view guys. I appreciate it, man. Thank you.